Um, so four reasons for this today. Firstly, how we get less bureaucracy when we're focusing on a lo lo local scale. When we only focus on these large, huge issues, you need to build political capital to actually get your voice heard. This means often like smaller green policy gets drowned out on the global stage. On a local stage, this happens less because organisations don't have to go through heaps of levels. They don't have to be fighting with other huge G7 countries that have so much more political capital like this. It looks like things like local councils, smaller people, that's where the change needs to be made. And we see that it's a lot more effective to get change through local councils than it is the UN. Secondly, on why that it takes less resources. It's easier to get rid of pests on one island than an entire country. We see that smaller change is simply easier in local communities because it takes less resources compared to huge global change. Global change requires trillions of dollars to actually fully tackle big changes that will actually make a difference. We see that this simply just doesn't happen effectively under the status quo. And when we do get this happening, it looks like research that requires decades to actually come to fruition and actually have changes. Even if you don't buy our reasons for how local change is going to be overall better anyway. Thirdly, because we, firstly, because we get less moderate policy. When we have an international focus on countries like China and Russia, who have major veto power and economic status, the, enviro the environmental movement has to moderate our policy, which gets less impactful work. It means we're not actually doing what we want to achieve in this world. On our side of the house, countries like Canada's environmental movement can focus on their own policy that is specific to the issues that they are facing. Moderate policy means we get less change and every small piece of change today matters. Strong poli um, any policy means we get actual change compared to huge things that never actually happen. So fourthly, we, um, fourthly, we get um, more equitable change. Different reasons need different things. Seaside towns need seawalls. Rural areas might need extra water because of the droughts that they're facing. If policy works, if their policy works, all funding goes into research and huge things instead of real change. This looks like overfishing in Japan getting um, getting neglected, and local like Pacific movements focusing on like nuclear waste. Things that are unique and extremely impactful for these communities get put to the side. We get less agriculture in these areas. We get food shortages, and we see these communities getting neglected in this fight for climate change. After this point, we get tangible change. We get people on the ground like cleaning water. We get green steel manufacturing in Germany because it's a locally focused issue. We get better irrigation systems in African countries. We get it faster without having to pass through like UN or global, um, global councils. Why, and we don't neglect smaller issues. Now, why is this important? Because small regional communities are the ones that are really being affected by climate change. G7 countries aren't dealing with the same issues. And because they have the most powers, we get more electric cars and paper straws, while Cape Town is running out of water, while Malawi is going through heat waves and diseases continuing to spread. We see this as devastating and fast change needs to happen. I'll take a few away. Uh, <coughs> earlier you stated that there will be a more equitable change, but as an environmental movement, wouldn't this be more fair to provide an uh, equal fund amongst all nations for the fight of climate change? We say by equitable change, we mean that change being specified to different re re regions. We see that they're going to need different things, and when we have movements focusing on huge issues, we're saying equitably the smaller issues are not going to be addressed the same. We see this as very bad. Se on to my second point, which is how we get better buy-in from the public and flow on effects into policy that's created. We need people to support climate movements because the smaller ones run on donations. And we need people to change their behaviour and their mindset to the, climate, um, to the climate crisis. Four reasons for this. Firstly, we get a movement that becomes more apolitical. Under the status quo, big figures on big stages use emotive language and throw tomatoes at paintings and make climate change a very um, political issue. We see Greta Thunberg being characterised as young brat by right-wing people because they think it's environmental as a leftist issue because it's become so political. We become more apolitical because we don't have to go on such a wide stage, stage to get our climate policy, um, to get our climate movement making impactful change. When we focus on uh, local, people are more inclined to, to collect, connect with environmental problems because it's not a political thing, it's a separate issue. Second, relatability. The climate movement on world stages disconnects the general public because they're not involved 
and it's for the big guys to sort out, and it's nothing to do with us. We see, when we will see in local communities people advertising on the streets, focusing on local issues, maybe this looks like better public transport, it looks like cleaning your beloved park, it looks like the fishery industry having um, changes. We see people connect more, and it becomes more prevalent and more related to them, and they will more likely connect. Thirdly, we get to change the perspective and the narrative around climate change. What we create on our side of the house is more achievable climate change. When people see this change that we've already explained happens more under our side of the house, we see less people thinking it's a done deal, and there's less of a read, there's no chance for us to change it. It's a doomsday advertisement, people losing hope. We see real small change that does make a difference. Under the status quo, people need to put this doomsday imaging out so that governments actually make change. When we're focusing on local change in small communities that adds up to make a difference, we get less of this, we get more people connecting because there's more hope. We see this is harmful for everyday people with the doomsday thing because they're just going to disconnect, they're not going to engage, and we get, don't get any public support. Fourthly, country buying. The USA does not want to change their climate policy because they don't see other countries doing the same, and they feel like they'll be at an economic disadvantage because these climate problems are very expensive. On our side, local groups focusing on local issues means government will be more likely to actually pass policy because it's not going to put them at an economic disadvantage. So we get local change, and we also get policy changes up higher when we see environmental becoming more normalised. We, this is good because we need people donating, we need people helping to the climate policy, we need behavioural change, and we need intangible environmental change instead of just ideas. We're going to see less backslide because smaller change is more sustainable, and instead of immediately forcing everyone to stop driving their cars, instead of actually getting behind climate change. By prioritising local environment issues, Team Hawks Bay tells you we prioritise the change environmental movements actually want and actually need. Thank you. We thank the first speaker from the affirmative side for that speech, and now we welcome up first negating. Here, here.
on their side of the house, they neglect the bigger issues, and they leave developing nations to suffer. Okay, so firstly, on like what we think this motion means. Well, we see the environmental movement as a movement that um, helps to bring change. They sure. value the environment, and they prioritize all people, all nations, to get like equal climate change, but not necessarily like equal. We see it as more equity, because developing nations are far more at a disadvantage, like economically and environmentally, um, compared in comparison to like bigger nations. We are not like completely ignorant of the fact that we still need to cater in these small like um, impacts. We just need to um, we just need what? we just we just completely negate the fact that we should be prioritizing over bigger issues that actually harm developing countries. Okay, so firstly on how prioritizing local government issues is ineffective and shuts people out. Okay, so like we see local issues as issues that are only subjected to an area. Okay, so like things that are like um, sure. things that are like um, issues that happen all over the place, like the burning of fossil fuels, we do not consider that local issues because it is not subjected to simply that local area. Okay, and so like why do we think those issues as well? Well, we see that in developing countries, they do not have the financial means for um, prior prioritizing local issues because their governments like tend yeah. to be very like corrupt. They tend to be like not actually focus on actually solving like the environmental changes. They don't have a lot of money for infrastructure, and so we sort of just leave them to suffer. Okay, and then secondly, about how it only works for developed nations. Okay, so like when we when these, these issues are likely to um, only work for developed nations because they actually do have the financial means, they actually do have the infrastructure sure. to actually improve like um, these local environmental issues. Well. Um, country, developing countries that are literally sinking underneath the ground due to the actions that we are currently neglecting on their side of the house um, are yeah. suffering and in the dirt. So, like, what have I proved to you by just saying this point? So, we've proved to you so far that, like, prioritizing local government issues has very low level impact and, act, and actually shut out, like, countries, like, developing countries due to a lack of, like, funding, due to a lack of infrastructure. Sure. And because um, more developed nations are, have like a functioning government and have a lot of resources that they can use, naturally they are going to be the ones who are, who are likely to take action from them, which is really, really bad because they are not the ones who are suffering from climate change in the first place. As the environmental, as the environmental movement, we prioritize people who actually have high levels, who are actually facing like high levels of harm and that, and that like, and that's because we would rather prioritize people who are actually directly affected by climate change, who sure. people who are losing their land, and people who are not necessarily like, and focusing on, and prioritizing, actively prioritizing um, smaller, low level issues um, is ineffective in dealing and combating with that. I will take it from your life. How do environmental um, movements influence politicians? Um, like, I don't really think it matters in this debate, just because, like, we, we're just talking on behalf of the environmental case that we want to make and what we want to prioritize. Okay, so second, on um, how prioritizing global climate change is more effective in protecting developing countries. Okay, so what do we see prioritizing global climate change looking like? Okay, well, so we don't see this as more like local areas. We see this as wide-scale issues that can actually help people. We see this as, like, how, like, the donations and funds that are actually given to the environment will be divided like um, like equitably sure. to different countries. Um, and we see like the most amount of money being given to developing countries who lack infrastructure, funds for reforestation um, across the world. We um, look at like switching to like doing more research and development of like re more renewable forms of energy and making that more accessible. Sure. Okay, so like how do we actually get better change and how do we actually protect these developing countries? Okay, so prioritizing global change, um, global climate change, like we see that if we put our money into things like actually doing the research and um, into actually making you know, renewable energy more accessible for people, we would see that like um, when we put more funds into actually making these resources more accessible for anyone, um, we see that like more people will actually switch to this type of energy. More, there will be more trees like in the world, and therefore, because a lot of the um, fossil fuels that are being used are fossil fuels that are used in like people's homes 
and are actually what cause um, a large amount of climate change. So we actually see like less fossil fuels being burned due to like research and development of this renewable energy. And the growth becomes warmer at a very less rapid rate. But at the same time, we also protected these developed nations because we are able to give them the money for the infrastructure. We are able to prioritize these issues. And the outcomes of this include how developing countries actually have the means to solve their issues. And the world is like, the world is necessarily like, the global issues have more wider scale impact of actually the earth becoming warmer at a lower, at a less rapid rate because of we are prioritizing these issues. We're giving people the means. We're div like we're dividing funds e um, evenly to actually researching and developing these things. So what have I proved to you in my speech? I have proved to you why um, it is so important that um, important actors are actually not shut out of these things because it is what we um, what we need to prioritize as the environmental movement, and that um, generally prioritizing lower impact issues tend to be less effective than prioritizing actual global climate change. This is why the moon shall stand proud to observe. We thank the first speaker of the negating side for that speech. And now we welcome up second affirmative. Here, here. Rather than the mass resource wasting that we just get on their side of the house. 
This looks like German steel plants that we are currently trying to switch over to more green alternatives. Getting focused on because green local movements are actually going to be caring about this rather than about China, America, India with their mass pollution. Um, whereas they do not get any of this. Um, also, we have told you that our tank is more effective at ALA. We told you about how it's going to be less moderate. Um, this went unresponded to. We also told you that it's going to be more equitable because like countries um, who have like different issues that they need to be focused on, different regions such as droughts or maybe it's flooding, um, we get that on our side the house being focused on, which is much more effective than just the one-size-fits-all um, model that we get on their side of the house. And then secondly, on developed nations. This is the majority of their cases about how they're going to be helping developing nations a whole lot. Um, so basically they told us that um, we're not leaving any resources for developing nations. Didn't really go into this, but we're going to basically say that they do get resources because it's local government, local movements targeting their resources. Um, and like this looks like, for example, our local iwi or like um, local charities um, putting their resources into their local regions. On our side, the house are incentivized to do this because we're prioritizing it. They're no longer just going to spend their money elsewhere. Um, secondly, they basically told us that like we're going to get research that is going to like focus on the most prevalent issues in like the fight like, health developing nations. So we think that like the research tends to be like queued to wide scale on their side of the house with global issues. We don't want this. We want like research that's going to be targeted to these specific areas. We're actually going to get changed. We don't want like these trillion dollar like carbon capture programs that we can literally see going nowhere in the like next few decades. We think it's highly important that we get change happening in the next few decades because we think like any little like degree increments in like temperature rise or like any greater pollution like affecting these people is going to just result in like huge numbers of deaths. It's going to result in like um, an ability to actually survive on this planet because of an inability to like actually grow food. So at the end of this point you can see that like we actually are helping developing nations much more than their side of the house. We're getting like, um, we're also getting communities involved, as Ella explained at first, because like it's not such a political issue anymore. Um, and this also went unresponded to on their side of the house, uh, which ultimately means that we're protecting developing nations more. Um, and then moving on to my split about nation indigenous communities, this also sort of responds to their like points about like local communities and they're wanting to protect them. Um, so for some context, we think that the environmental movement should care about indigenous um, groups because they are like the first people, they've lived on the land, they know about environmental issues and they're likely to be impacted by it with their culture. So firstly we say, like so three reasons not to, like how this is going to change on our side of the house. Firstly we say like they go unnoticed on their side of the house internationally. There's so many indigenous groups when we're all like trying to listen to all of the different voices on like the international stage, trying to like prioritize every single one of them, that's really unlikely to happen on their side of the house. Um, secondly, we tell you that like, we should care about these native and indigenous groups because like, they're really knowledgeable on like, the issues that are happening in their region. We won't prioritize them and we prioritize these local groups. Um, we actually like, are going to be receiving their knowledge. We're going to be like, listening to their knowledge and enacting it. This is like the Inuit people um, who like, have been doing sustainable fishing for generations, being listened to and having like, their voices heard from like, the Western governments um, in those countries. Do we I? just don't get this on their side of the house and we prioritize global issues. Um, and then thirdly, we tell you that like um, it. Thirdly, we tell you that these like communities is uh, we get them like being listened to more on our side of the house. Um, we're prioritizing their voices. We think that it's really bad when we don't because like if they're getting forgotten. It means their culture is being forgotten. Like um, take for example their culture, which is inherently tied to their land for um and many indigenous groups. We get that completely um eradicated like when we have these environmental when we don't have like the local environmental issues being prioritized, um, etc. Why is it that um, people still do not lose their land on the side of the house? People don't lose their land because we're actually like getting local environmental issues prioritized, which means that like local land is getting like sick. We're getting like picking up litter. We're not polluting it anymore. Um, it's not just the global stuff anymore. So, so what are the outcomes of some of this point? So firstly we see we like get better policy and better climate action and better environmental outcomes because this knowledge is being prioritized. It can actually help these environmental movements to like um, continue to put forward better policy. Um, and we also think we get like much better outcomes for indigenous groups that as I earlier characterized, um, they should be prioritized by environmental movements. It means that like their land is going to be protected, um, as I've explained. It means that like the cultural importance of the land is going to be protected because land is being protected. It can be handed down through generations, and we ultimately think this like culture is just really important because it like it holds a lot of knowledge in and of itself, um, and it helps like society to be more diverse um, as a whole. 
And then, like, um, it is really important that we do this because we don't want these cultures going extinct. We don't want the westernized version. We're going to get on their side of the house when we globalize, when we have the status quo, we globalize climate action. And this is why you should vote for today. <laughs> We thank the second speaker of the affirmative side for their speech, and now we welcome up second negating. Get here. from the affirmative team is a bunch of low-level impacts about how doing all these little um, little minor changes to local environments is all, all of a sudden going to help these massive, overwhelming, looming issues that we see in the status quo that are affecting all of these small communities they seem to care so much about that doing all these little things are going to somehow equate to actually solving massive climate issues that we see in the status quo in the world today. Two points in this debate. Uh, first, the clash is on which side actually gets more tangible benefits and which side actually benefits indigenous communities. Secondly, uh, secondly um, on the split point, which is the help of these, these global climate issues need prioritizing. Firstly, on clashes. Um, which side gets more tangible benefits? Uh, which side actually gets more tangible benefits? What we heard from affirming is a lot of talk, um, as a, as a, lot of, um, a lot of these pushes based around small, um, based around doing these small local community, community groups in that our outside house, we can't get these because we are actually global. Um, we are we are focusing more on global climate issues. This is in fact false because as as they define these smaller issues, they are small. They don't require that many much resources. As they've stated on their side, so we see because of the size of us, the 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 environmental movement, we see that we we see that by prioritizing um, the global issues, we are still able yeah. to support these smaller issues because as they stated, as they stated, these issues are smaller, which means. As a big environment, environmental movement, we, we have enough resources as the environmental movement to actually allocate to A, prioritizing these big major global issues which are important and also, of, no, um, and also giving resources to these C-O-I? smaller, uh, to these more smaller local, um, local, uh, local environment, uh, environmental issues. They also make massive pushes on these local environment, environmental issues saying, um, saying that a lot of these smaller um, smaller communities uh, require a lot of help that we need to start focusing in uh, a lot of um, a lot of we need to start focusing more on the focusing on resources on them through responsibilities. Firstly we see a lot of the issues that these local and uh, that a lot a lot of these local environmental issues are actually very minor. We see these as um, as the stated uh, clearing waterways, uh, looking after land, maintaining land, all these kinds of things are very minor, which means the resources that they need are unnecessarily well, unnecessarily not, um, which means that they don't necessarily need to be prioritized in order to get the adequate uh, resources they need. Um, secondly, we see that a lot of these, because of how minor they are, a lot of them aren't as impactful as the affirmative team claims. A lot of these um, things actually stem from bigger climate issues that the affirmative team actually can't solve because they're prioritizing all of their resources, a lot of smaller stuff. What this means is that the affirmative team the affirmative team blindly focuses on small issues, neglecting a lot of the bigger issues that actually stand in this debate, which washes most of their material on a lot of these small impacts because they really didn't ac- um, acclimatize to anything, anything else. They also talked a lot about um, this, uh, that, that is their main push in this debate about how these a lot of these minor things equate to these major things. Giving no real analysis, they simply say because they're focusing on smaller issues, all of a sudden these bigger issues are going to be solved, that they're going to get all these benefits they claim, but actually ignoring that a lot of these smaller issues that happen in these communities they care so much about happen because of bigger climate crisis, which they continuously ignore. We can get all these benefits on our side of the house because as I state, because as they state themselves, these are relatively small issues, which means they don't need a lot of funding as the affirmative team would have you believe, which means we can not only tackle big climate crisis on our side of the house, but smaller communities that require the help, which leads, which is why we were there for which is why we went that point, mitigating a lot of their major material on that, which moves on to the second point, which is which side better, um, which, which side better helps indigenous communities. Um, the main push from this, the main push from, uh, the main push from the um, affirmative team on this is 
focusing around how a lot of Western countries are, are, are focusing on, are focusing on, on how a lot of these countries actually, how a lot of these indigenous groups will be forgotten because it's their land that we're, that they were able, that we're losing, and by, um, and by focusing on more global issues, we're not able to give them uh, the attention they need. Obviously, as I first speak to you, a lot of indigenous countries in the South Pacific, all these countries that are um, very yeah, understood, wouldn't exist if we don't focus on these bigger global issues. We see, as the first speaker stated, as the first speaker stated, you can help um, tree planting with the local support all you want, but it doesn't negate the fact that it's sinking because of larger global crisis. The affirmative team is stuck in this world where putting up some sea walls in front of a sinking country is somehow going to save them. They, ne they never what? acknowledge how these um, larger, larger climate issues are actually extremely important to the smaller issues they want to solve. They try to mitigate this by saying that, oh, um, a lot of the work that these big climate, um, that these big, big movements do isn't actually important that because it's slow, it doesn't make as big an impact. But we see this as false. A lot of the research that's been done, you know we do understand, does take a long time, but it's actually giving us more benefits, more research, more support to these countries because we see putting what the affirmative team does is put uh, minor fixes to major problems. They make small are short-term fixes to issues that need a lot of long-term thinking, which they can't get on their side of the house because they are prioritizing all their resources yeah. as the environmental um, as the environmental movement on on smaller issues instead of actually focusing on those that are actually more major, which is why uh, we win that class, uh, which is why we win that class. And onto uh, onto this onto uh, onto this before you I'll take a I'll take a few ones. Do you listen to environmental movements? Yes. Because I love the environment. Everyone needs to listen and love trees. We love the environment. We love the environment. Everyone needs the environment. You know, it's important. On to my split on why climate change is a global issue that needs prioritizing context. We see in the status quo already um, scientists predicting massive heat waves, a lot of extinction, a lot of bad things overall happening in our climate climate within the next few years if we don't start doing something. And these aren't these aren't issues that are confined to small yeah, communities. Communities like the affirmative team, like the affirmative team's fixed on, these are issues that are that every community is being fixed, that every community is being um, uh, that detrimented by. Not just not just the, the indigenous people, not just the developing nations. Everyone is being affected by these large scale issues, which is why you know they need prioritizing. Um, which is why they need prioritizing. Because we see that due to the massive global effects that a lot of these issues have. A lot of these issues have a lot of the smaller, a lot of these smaller communities that they focus on. Actually, the the, the environmental detriment that they already have get a lot bigger because, as you see, overall the climate affects all these issues. A lot of a lot of these smaller yeah. detriments that the affirmative team tries so hard to fix actually get worse because they neglect the bigger problem at hand, which is global warming. All these other different major, major, major environmental detriments. So we see, so we see, this is why we need prioritizing, because these are issues, these are issues that actually majorly affect major, uh, a lot of groups, a lot of groups in the world, because, because of the global nature of this, we see that, we see that by putting it on the back burner, by not giving it the prioritization that it needs, you put not just one group of people, not just two groups of people, the entire world in jeopardy. Jeopardy. And when we do acknowledge that these lo these local communities are important, that they do need the support, we do feel they can get this adequate, su adequate support from other funds. We do not need to prioritize all these local issues, we local issues to get the benefits that they need. What we need to do is focus on big climate crises, prioritizing big climate change, because because as I stated, a lot of that flows down. It's a big waterfall. A lot of that flows down into other issues that overall negatively affects everyone, which is why we're so, so proud to affirm. We thank the second speaker for negating slides for the speech, and now we welcome up the affirmative. Thank you.
tried to address them. Things like the Paris Climate Agreement not meeting their target of staying below 1.5 percent, other like initiatives by countries who are trying to get their emissions down, and why those big countries do not have the incentive to look out for the little guy. On, we need to prove in today's debate, even if those changes aren't big, we at least get changes materializing on the ground, which is what we need in a climate emergency that is accelerating, and we see the effects of this on the ground today. Two points of question today. Firstly, is big change actually going to be achieved? And secondly, is it, um, how is this change going to materialize in smaller countries, right? Firstly, I want to um, engage with a lot of the material we heard from the negotiating team as to why like, a lot of these small issues are going to need to be targeted at the high scale level, right? But what we need to hear engagement is, is why these countries why do not want big change, right? I'm going to explain to you four reasons as to why big countries, who are the ones with the most power in this situation, they're the ones who are vetoing a lot of these um, big climate bills, they're the ones who have the money and the resources to put into this that are going to help these small countries. Here's why we don't get them on board. Firstly, they are usually the big polluters, a lot of them in the G7, places like the USA, places like China and things like, and, and countries, are usually the ones who make the most money off the um, climate crisis, therefore they do not have an incentive to change that way, right? Secondly, it's intangible. We believe in a lot of these countries that they're not seeing the effects of climate change on their doorstep every day. They're not the ones doing floods. They're not the ones having these huge cyclones and things like that. Well, they're not going, they are not going to see the effects of it in the future, therefore it doesn't affect their constituency. It's not, it's not an issue that's going to make or break the election. They're not going to care about it. Thirdly, right, it's politically divisive. As we get a very strong material, Ella, and how the climate movement has essentially become a leftist like scapegoat, where people are usually, um, where it's usually contingent, most sides of a bipartisanship are not going to want to agree on climate policy, right? Because it's a very politically spaced issue. We gave you examples of the smiles being thrown at the car for sunflowers, how it just makes uh, the political movement look like and political, and that's why big countries don't want to buy into it, right? Now that we have proof why we are simply not going to get big change because those big countries that we need are not going to do it, how are we actually, um, what does this mean in this debate? It means all we have to prove is that we get change on any sort of level that would excel, el accelerate the climate movement, right? They want to try and say, anyways, if our change, they're too low level to get any, um, they're too low level to get any change, right? But what we believe is we get something that's very Wait. unique to our side. We get things like public buy-in. When we get see people in the community actually helping out, they sit in their face, they can actually shake their hand, and they're not just a random email letter telling them the world's going to die in seven years. They're going to be more likely to want to, like, go out and help with that work cleaner, more likely to bike to work instead of riding a car, right? And that Wait. behavioral change in this space is so important. Because when we get behavioral change, we actually get Spanning for generations, not just a huge change in the, in the first time that people are not going to buy into. Why are people not going to buy into this huge change? It's going to be because we're going to see a lot of backslides. When we get radical change to something right off the bat, we see a lot Point. of people like going from using like their normal lifestyle, maybe using a car, maybe like um, maybe using a car, maybe like eating meat and stuff like that. When you decide to tell people actually no, we all need to go vegan and you're all going to walk everywhere, people are not going to want to like change into that because it's a huge shift. It's a huge amount of like money that needs to like put into changing their lifestyle. When we get more incremental things that seem more achievable, people are going to be more likely to do it because it's just the small steps that get them there rather than them being completely turned off by the idea. And like when we, um, and therefore not engaging with it at all, on our side our house it's explosive and we get those small changes, right? They also want to try and say under this that like, um, I want to try to say that, like, right, developing countries, like, don't have the money under the status quo, therefore, we're not going to get any change on our side, right? We're perfectly fine with diverting resources in these countries, because we, uh, we uh, like, we recognize that climate change is a huge issue, right? But we also believe that in, in the environmental movement, we actually get more money diverted to these countries because we can see, um, see these localized issues getting addressed. They wanted to come back and say, well, oh, it's millions of small issues, how are you going to tackle them all? We believe these small issues on, in an individual scale are going to have less money in order to get through them and that's simply because like they are on a, a smaller scale and you actually they're on a smaller scale it's more like diverted funding it's actually got an extra step it's got a goal which is really important right because then it doesn't allow the like people to get this large sum of money and be like oh what do we do with it i don't know people like cycle waves and they don't get any of that community feedback which we got on our side that's really important right and then they wanted to try and say um then they also wanted to try and say lastly on this issue that issues are minor and they should be deprioritized they all from a larger issue, as we, can as we explained, they do not address that larger issue. But if they were to address that larger issue, we believe these minor um, issues are still really important, right, even on its own, because these minor issues are like what affects communities on the ground. It's the things that people interact with every single day. It's what people are going to be most inconvenienced by. Therefore, you get most people who want to vote for green policy, and that's really important under our side of the house, right? So what do we get at the end of this?
point. At the end of this point, we tell you it should get changed on your outside of the house, which is so important in a climate crisis, which is escalating in the right so uh, so fast that it's not going to um uh, th that we need change on the ground immediately. Right, I'll take a POI before I move on. Uh, earlier you stated that minor issues are uh, uh, will your plan to solve minor issues as environmental uh, maintenance. But will these issues already be solved by localized governments? We believe localized governments under the status quo do not have the incentive acting on them um, to solve these issues um, right now because they do not have these environmental organizations getting in their face and actually advocating for this policy, right? Secondly, about how we actually get a change in effective in countries more effectively, right? They wanted to try and say under this that like we're gonna get more R and D which is good because like more countries are going to be able to do things like plant trees or things or, or things of that matter, right? We believe that the R and D for climate change has already been done to a sufficient level as to which if we implemented it all today, we would have great climate like impacts, right? Like things like biodegradable like packaging, things like carbon vents and um planting um, more trees. It's just stuff that we can do under the quote, it's stuff we already have the R and D for. So that's why we believe the funding goes there is just kind of relevant. But then the question now becomes, why are we not implementing that under the status quo? This is a set of expenses and, and that or that cost is going to be pushed onto the um, consumer and they're going to think it's more expensive. And um and therefore that R and D kind of just goes to waste because it's not being implemented on a wide scale, right? We believe if those issues are actually diverted and we get people caring about those issues, we're actually going to get more people trying to buy into the climate crisis, right? That's really important. Now, look quickly, lastly, on indigenous communities, right, and how they actually do not get forgotten. When they wanted to try and say that they still are affected under these large climate issues and that it's genuinely just the same as everyone else, right? What is specifically different about these indigenous communities? They have lived on the land generations more than a lot of a lot of the other people who are in these climate organizations have. What does this mean to do today? When they actually engage these indigenous communities, they can understand how they've been able to preserve that land for generations, and they have a unique benefit as to when we can collaborate with them, we can like see their ideas about how the Inuit people can do sustainable fishing, and, and we actually get those voices heard on a larger scale, which is so, so important, especially when these climate movements are overwhelmingly sort of, um, overwhelmingly run by like, I don't know, white Democrats who like aren't really connected with indigenous people because their voices have been suppressed for so long. When we get these voices actually heard out, we get new and innovative solutions to climate change that won't break the bank. We think it's really important. At the end of this debate, who is the team that provides you with actual tangible change on the ground for who's going to solve climate change? I mean, uh, adapt to climate change. It's Team Wolf Day. Please vote for them. We thank the third speaker of the affirmative side for their speech, and now we welcome up the negating. Here, here. Yeah, well, I'm only so 
wrongly solved by these local governments in the first place. Thus, the, the point that what they're making this whole time, how the environmental movement needs to figure on a, on, a on a global scale, that that this is all irrelevant. Second, uh, now, and that's why we have one that put in flash. Second of all, uh, second of all, which, uh, which side more positively affects developing nation, uh, developing countries? From the opposition, we've heard that that by by so uh, these local issues, they will incentivize people you to they will incentivize people to uh, turn and change their lifestyle. You know, ride a bike or whatever, change from car. But what we see the effects of this is that these countries are still drowning. All of these issues are still happening, even though these people may be incentivized to change their lifestyle a little bit. Right? That is why the, uh, these issues may be solved on a global scale. These developing nations, you, uh, when you hear them, they're very, they're very run down, they, have, they lack good infrastructure, litter everywhere. And, and what we see from developed nations, or nations that cause all these problems, what we see is that you these, these governments are actively fixing their environments. We see that we have good infrastructure in, in these Western progressive uh, developed nations that we don't see in developing countries. And another point, uh, sure. next, another, another push they try to, uh, a push from our team on why we posit uh, more positively affect developing nations, something that we've been reminding you ever and ever again, was that the fact that when we are focusing on climate change, this is something, say, you may not be able to see the change as they like to mitigate the effect sure. of the change name. They like to uh, mitigate the effect of the change, but it's because we, in developed nations have these governments that look after us. When you see who gets the front of these changes, who, of, of these effects of climate change, who gets the front? It's all these countries. And solving localized issues in developed nations you know may, may work because it is already a system in place in the status quo. But when we try to move that to developing nations, as uh, my team has stated, is that these developing nations lack funds, they lack the capacity to, to, to even uh, solve their own issues. They are, they are very corrupt. Like these are governments that supposedly care. don't care, they don't care about the environment. Uh, so, so uh, another push they try to do is that, oh, uh, we are uh, as the, as an environmental movement. Uh, my my first speaker has stated this is that when we bring these nations together, we will divide it equitably, sure. equitably. Nay, among the nations, especially developing nations who need it more, and uh, developed nations who probably need it less. What we see on in the, in the status quo is that the developing in the developing nations, uh, the developed nations already have these systems in place, as I said before, and these developing nations do not have these systems in place due to the lack of capacity. So, as an environmental movement, if we focus on global climate change, we will be, we will be, we, what would ha what would it look like? It would be that we were actively, actively, equitably the, dividing it amongst all these developing nations. So. What, what I, why this is so important? Because not only did we prove that we are actively protecting, uh, helping these nations by focusing on climate change because they face the front, we also proved that the changes that lo uh, localizing, uh, fixing local environmental issues will never work for these, com uh, these countries as they lack the capacity, they lack the finances, and... and Can you want to go? Yes. Do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Why did you see when the country the green team? Why do G7 countries listen to Greenpeace? Well, of course, of course, I'm assuming Greenpeace is, is an environmental movement, uh, 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 activist. So countries listen to this because they are, these governments are advised. They are advised by multiple people, especially on regards to the environment and regards to politics, all of that. They're advised and look at, the, and we see the evidence in the footing. We see it, we see in these developed nations, they are much cleaner, they use, 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 use you then see all the detrimental effects of climate change because these governments already protect, uh, they uh, already fix these local issues and they have the capacity for it. Developing nations don't have the capacity sure. for it, they can't live. Now moving on to, uh, and that's why we, we on our side, uh, positively affect developing nations far more than the, uh, the other side. On to my second point of class. Which side effectively fixes issues? Uh, as you can hear, I've, I've, I've touched on a few points as how we effectively fix issues. But first, I want to give you a push that the opposition has, has given. You that's no, that's smaller. That's because these groups are smaller, they fix issues faster. As I stated, as my second speaker said, these issues, the issues that these small groups, these localized communities are fixing.
something. It's very specific to where they are, to where they are. And he thanks you this in the developing nations. This is all very specific. And and sure, maybe if people pick up litter in their own environment, it will fix it will fix a small yeah. scale problem. But the effects of this is way less impactful than what acti uh, actively uh, going uh, prioritizing climate change does. Because what climate change does is actively helps all these developing nations who feel the front of climate change. We see and and what happens is they see a lot. What happens is that on our side we give we give dividends, we give subsidies as an environmental movement so they can gain the capacity to do certain things to fix the problem of climate change, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Another push they stated on how it effectively fixes issues is that they bring in uh they, they use the term buy in. So what 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 they uh so what they mean by this is that is if you actively see change, you'll be more incentivized to donate. What we see from governments in developed nations today is that the citizens of that country already actively pay tax. They pay tax so that to say that, that the country, you know, infrastructure and the environment, et cetera, are all are, are all working well. That's the tax, that's where the money's getting fronted. And even as an environmental movement, we gain donations from every single country, from all these developed nations. And what what happens is when we ex when we have all these big donations, we're able to give, as I stated again, capacity for all these developing nations. So, and the case of buy-in, because the buy-in is not an issue. We we are actively in in, in all these progressive developed nations, these rich nations. We are actively uh, putting in money towards this issue. So that that so so we on our side actively fix global issues which are more impactful than solving smaller my my new in comparison. Thank you. We thank the third speaker of the negating side for that speech. Now, as is customary, we'll switch the sides, and I welcome up negating reply. Here, here. environmental change. Okay, so what do we hear from me? We hear that like it's more equitable. 
um, we hear that the countries, the developing countries that we push so hard to actually benefit, are still being benefited because, um, like, we, like, as an environmental group, we choose who we um, specifically help. Okay, so I just want to ask one thing to start up early. Like, what country doesn't deserve to be helped in this instance? Because we have two types of countries that are the majority, and as I have said, we have limited actual finance to help these um, people. So we have the people who are actually causing climate change who should be very much, like, commented. And there, should, and there are people who are actively affected by climate change. Those are the two majority groups around the world who are actually actively affected by this. And because we have limited means, we, we cannot afford to actually focus on these small, low-level issues. There is no actual capacity on their side of the house for developing countries because, as we have said, there is, um, like, limited means, limited finances. Um, so, we, it's unclear on a few things. It's unclear on how smaller groups get faster change with this limited capacity. It's unclear on who is actually useless and who we actually don't want to help. Um, and what ha what we have proven to you in this debate is that um, like smaller scale issues, local community issues are actually ineffective because we have limited capacity, because we have limited time, limited means, limited money, and therefore this is why we need to ultimately try and cater to everyone. Because helping smaller level countries, helping um, bigger level countries, like services, we have development, we have research, we have all of these things which we do not get on affirmative. How to engage. We thank the negating reply for this speech. Now to close out this debate, we welcome affirmative reply. Realistically, we 
don't see Indigenous voices being represented in the UN to the extent that they need to be, they cannot claim this either. We told you we would get less bureaucracy and faster. This was we unresponded to. We told you it would be more realistic because it needs less resources. They told us this was a bad thing, that we get more realistic change. We also told you we get less moderate policy, and this also went unresponded to properly. We told you we get better stuff in developed countries because we didn't... Um, because they claim that we wouldn't have any resources in these countries, we tell you we will have donations from charities, iwi, individuals, people who are more incentivised because they will connect more under our model. We help them because big issues often get centralised and we see smaller, unique issues actually getting addressed under our side. This is exclusive. We told you these big countries have no incentive to help. This makes less moderate policy. And also, quickly on people's response, we tell you that people will be more engaged when they see it in their communities. They told you that people in developed countries care. We tell you more people need to care than the people facing the issues themselves. We, need to, we tell you that it needs to be brought to light in many different local communities for change actually to happen. Um, Um, okay, I'd like to thank both teams for a great debate. Uh, invite them to cross the floor, shake hands, rub elbows, and then.